Hello everyone over here. This is going to be Steve commentating for the Coin Master's battles. I have commentated for the Coin Master for a many of his underground tournaments and everything. So I believe it's going to be a great honor to commentate for his battles for the EBL. For the people who do not know, EBL stands for Elite Battle League. It is a group of people competing in a Pokemon tournament to figure out who is the best among them. They have a couple rules for the people that might want to know. First of all, they are able to draft nine Pokemon and they can draft three restricted picks. It is one big legendary, which is based at total of 680 or higher. And then they can draft two Pokemon of anything else, like pseudo mythical, small legendaries, paradox, and stuff like that. That is their three restricts, one big, two small, and then they have the rest of the six Pokemon that they could draft or normal Pokemon. It is going to be a singles battle format, no held items for each of the battles. Also, the uh, Restricts cannot Terra as well. Only regular Pokemon can Terra, Restricts cannot. And also, only two Restricts can come at a certain time. You can do any method the way you want to do, but only two out of the three can be brought for each fight. The Coin Master Team Coin is going to be facing off against the New Mexico Arcanines, coached by Kante Kage. His team is Grimmsnarl, Rotom Wash, Incineroar, Iron Hands, Mewtwo, Tornadus Therian Form, Sneasler, Melodic, and Glimmora. Wow, the Coin Master, coach of Team Coin, has Greninja, Renucleus, Terrakion, Magnazone, Hatterene, Kiram, Dondozo, Shaman Sky, and Torkoal. I will bring you back to the battle whenever we have these two behemoths in the battle, and we're going to see how this battle goes today. We are over here on the starting screen. Team Coin versus the New Mexico Arcanines. Team Coin has brought the Kiram, Hatterene, Magnazone, Torkoal, Donzozo, and Shaman Sky. While the New Mexico Arcanines has brought Incineroar, Sneasler, Rotom Wash, Glimpsnarl, Melodic, and Iron Hands. It seems like both teams have brought very good powerhouses for today. The New Mexico Arcanines seems to be bringing a very good physical team, while Team Coin is bringing a defensive more team in the style that they have. I do know that each Pokemon has their own different things that they can do and everything, and it seems like they're both trying to figure out their leads. It does like seem like from this side, we do get to see the lead for Team Coin is going to be Torkoal. It has amazing defense, it has Drought as the ability to boost bring in the sun, boost in fire type moves and weaken water type moves, and it does get access to hazards and everything. We will be seeing here in a minute where or what the New Mexico Arcanines will be bringing. If you do not know, there are going to be other competitors for this within their everything. Everything is going to be in the description below and everything. And make sure to check out the other competitors as well. You can just see amazing battles. Seems like the New Mexico Arcanine is bringing Incineroar as their lead. It's a very good lead. It has Intimidate, which lowers the attack of Pokemon by one stage when it enters out. It is a very good Pokemon in VGC, if not voted one of the best by Wolfie himself, a Pokemon Championship holder title himself. We do see the Coin Master pick a move and everything. And Cinderor does go for the fake out. It does make Torkoal flinch, which means that it can't use nothing this churn. It's a very good tactic to try to learn, if anything, or break sturdy, anything like that. We see the Cinderor now going for Parting Shot, which is good as well because it lowers the attack and special attack of the Pokemon. Not knowing how they're built is good to go for both of the different type of attackings in order to lower the damage output so you can get a safe switch in. We do see that the New Mexico Arcanines are going to be bringing out another Pokemon because Parting Shot lets you bring out another thing, another Pokemon out. While we just see Torkoal just sitting there with the steam coming out of his back and everything. Seems that the New Mexico Arcanines are bringing out Grimmsnarl, a very good choice. Also, the shiny is very cool, cool looking. We can see Torkoal bringing out the rocks, which is not going to be good because unfortunately the New Mexico Arcanines forgot to bring any hazard set of removers or anything for this battle. We do know that Grimmsnarl can set up screens and everything else. He can do Thunder Waves. It has the Prankster ability, which you do not know, causes status moves to have an increased priority. As you see here with Parting Shot, it is a status move, so it does increase in priority, which is another good move to do because, as you, we've seen, Torkoal has not attacked at all, so we get to see it lowers attack and special attack, also giving the New Mexico Arcanines another good Pokemon to switch into, which they switch into Melodic, which is a very good Pokemon to switch to against the Torkoal because it, it, they 
water type while Torkoal is a fire type. Even though Drought does weaken the damage of water type moves, it will still do super effective damage against the Torkoal. We do see the Body Press come to a little bit, which is a little bit of damage against the Melonic, but it's not that much. We do see here that the Coin Master is looking to switch out because of the fact that Milotic does pack like Hypnosis and other status moves and stuff like that. That is also a water type. It is especially thick. We do see the Coin Master switch out for Hatterene, which is very good because it does have magic bounce and reflect any status moves or any non-attacking moves back at the opponent, while Melodic does go for a good Scald. It is super effective. It was going to be super effective on the Torkoal and even maybe get a burn, which is going to be good. But either way, we do see that happening. We do see the Coin Master going for Calm Mind, which is very good because with the Drought up, Scald is only doing half damage. And with Hatterene having high special defense and even getting more special defense and even special attack, attack from the calm mind hatterene should be able to eat these moves no problems that does put the new mexico arcanines in a bit of a tough spot but good for them because the drought did go away making to where scald is going to do more damage it seems that the new mexico arcanines are fishing for the burn and it happens on the hatterene hatterene is a special type pokemon so it's not going to get affected by the damage output because of the burn however it is going to have lingering damage we do see the hatterene get some hp back from the draining kiss although it tends to take some damage from the burn. I wonder what these two opponents are going to be doing here. Milotic is looking a little bit low on HP while Hattering is sitting pretty decently. Everybody still has their full teams and everything, so we'll be seeing what's going to be happening. We could either see a switch, we could either see the Milotic stay to bring in a safe switch to another Pokemon. We don't know what we're going to be seeing. Seems like they're both trying to figure everything out. Although we do see the new Mexico Arcanine switch out the Milotic over here, and they are now going to bring out Iron Hands. It is going to be a very decent Pokemon, but at the same time, not the best because of the fact that it is a fighting type. It is weak to the fairy. We see the rocks coming in with a little bit of chippy damage, breaking off any sturdy and any Pokemon that could have it, while Hatterene does get full HP from the Draining Kiss and deal massive damage to the Iron Hands hands. At this moment here, you have to decide for yourself, do I want to leave the Iron Hands in to get a safe switch in, or do I want to try to save this for any particular reason? We do want to see what each competitor decides to do. Seems like the Coin Master just going on the offensive here because he's like, we're all going to be good over here. We seem to be having the New Mexico Arcanines seem to be thinking a little bit, because for those who do not know, Iron Hands has really good attack and defensive. It is a Paradox Mon, it is fighting electric type. However, on the special side, on the special attack and special defense, it's not that high. It is more physically bulky and physically attacking than anything however we do see the reason why it comes out because it knows heavy slam dealing massive damage on the hatterene but not doing enough letting hatterene get off a draining kiss to where it takes down the iron hands hatterene did leave on four live on four which is unfortunate because heavy slam is done by the weight of the pokemon and iron hands weighs a lot of weight so that's the reason why the new mexico arcanines try to bring out the iron hands against the hatterene it was a good plan, but it did not unfortunately work in its favor. Let's see what the new Mexico brings out. They now bring out Rotom. Rotom is a electric water type. Very good status Pokemon. Very good wall, if anything. The rocks do a little bit of chip damage on it. Rotom does get access to like Will-O-Wisp, Thunder Wave, Hex, Hydro Prompt, Pain Split. It gets access to a pretty decent amount of moves, and it can be very annoying being very uh, defensively and special defensively and special attack all have a 107. Also with a Water and Electric type and Levitate. The only thing that is weak to is Grass. It does do a Volt Switch to try to break down the Hattering, which it's able to do, giving... The New Mexico Arcanine is a good opportunity over here to switch out to another Pokemon for then that way that happens. But unfortunately, it seems that the New Mexico Arcanines are the ones going to have to pick first in order to get a Pokemon out. It is, if it was the other case way around, if they would have switched, if the Coin Master would have switched first, then they would have first pick. The New Mexico Arcanines do bring out the Incineroar again. If, again, fantastic lead, Intimidate. With the parting shot and fake out is a good Pokemon to lead against. While the Coin Master Team Coin does bring out Torkoal again. Torkoal is very defensively bulky. With the Cinnawar being mainly a physical attacker, it understands why the Coin Master wants to bring out Torkoal. Torkoal also having Body Prez being super effective against the Incineroar is also good as well. We do get to see the Incineroar do the fake out again like we did with the first turn. And even though Drought does uh, weak of water type moves, it does... 
uh, strength and fire type moves. So it does also could be good and bad for the coin master as well. We see the same strat from the first two turns. Fake out party shot to lower the attack and the special attack getting his clean switch in. And then we're going to see what the coin master does in retaliation against this. Because this is a thing we have already seen before. And we might be able to see something different or he's going to see the same, same thing play out. Do they go out to the melodic again? No, they go out to the rotom this time. Hoping to maybe get a hydro pump off. The point is the stones do some damage here, and it seems like the Coin Master did predict the switch out because he went for Yawn. Now, the New Mexico Arcanines are in a little bit of a pickle because now they have a choice to make. Do they let the Rotom stay in to potentially get put to sleep, or do they hard switch out, or maybe even use Volt Switch to try to uh, switch out to where the Pokemon does not fall asleep? They have a decision to make, while the Coin Master here also has a decision to make. Just in case he decides to stay in and go for Hydro Pump and letting the uh, Rotom go to sleep, does he want Torkoal to go down? Because yes, Drought is up to where Hydro Pump will only do half damage, but it is still a Hydro Pump, a very hard-hitting water-type move against Torkoal. Torkoal is decent in special defense, but not the best in it. So they both competitors here both have a very hard choice to make. It seems they are thinking very hard about what they want to do. Coin Master keeps looking around and everything, and I'm pretty sure on the New Mexico Arcanines as well. They are both just keep looking around and looking around at everything. Seems like we're going to be seeing Team Coin make out the switch here, and they're going to be bringing in the Godfather, the Magna Zone. Very good choice. It resists both the Volt Switch very well, and it's also neutral against the Hydro Pump. We do see the Rotom go for the Volt Switch, which means that it's not going to be getting, be put to sleep. And then we're going to be seeing what Pokemon the New Mexico Arcanines will be bringing into play. For those who do not know, Magnezone has one of the highest special attacks in some of the earlier games. Now, we do have legendaries and stuff, which beat out a special attack, but it still has a very high special attack. The abilities Sturdy and Analytic are very good, they live at 1 HP, or since with Magnezone's slow speed, Analytic boosts the moves because it moves after the opponent by 1.3 times. It seems the New Mexico Arcanines are thinking about who they want to bring out against the Magnezone, because Magnezone is pretty defensively tanky as well. Not so much on the special side, but it is defensively tanky as well. Plus, being steel electric type, it is a very good resistant typing to everything. Seems like he is bringing out the Incineroar, a very good choice for it being a fire type and the rain and the sun being a very good boost about the sun and everything. So it seems like we're doing good. Some of this, but you start to see some of the switches here getting affected by the rocks. We do see that the uh, team coins brings out the Torkoal again. It seems that like the Torkoal is a big problem for Incineroar, just eating the hits from fake out, not really being affected by the parting shot because of body press. And just because it is very physically defensive, it just seems to be a problem for the Incineroar. We do see a little bit of a misplay here with the double fake out. Unfortunately, for those who do not know, fake out only works in the first turn of the Pokemon Pokemon comes out. I'm pretty sure there was a reason for that misplay, but unfortunately it does happen and it lets Torkoal finally take down the Incineroar, which is unfortunate for the New Mexico Arcanines. Now we do see the drought go away, which do probably prompts the New Mexico Arcanines to bring out Rotom. It is no longer affected by the drought, so Hydro Pump is going to do decent damage over here. Looks like the Coin Master may either have to try to keep the Torkoal in in order to live it, or he switches out again. We will be seeing what New Mexico Arcanine is doing. My prediction is he's going to probably going for a Hydro Pump, seeing that the Drought is gone and everything. And he's like, I got a Fire type in front of me. Even though he switches Hydro Pump, his team pretty decently for most of the Pokemon and everything. So Hydro Pump is not that bad. You could also see Thunder Wave. You can see Willow is coming out. Who knows exactly? Because he also could be trying to get chip damage. We do see that the Magnezone comes out again against the Rogue. Rotom. Well, the Rotom does land a heavy Hydro Pump. It does land a heavy Hydro Pump, which would have done massive damage against the Torkoal here. We do see that the coin, uh, Team Coin has now done a risky play going for Mirror Coat. Hydro Pump did very decent damage against the, against the Magnezone, and now it's going to be a roll to whether it gets taken out or not by the Hydro Pump. It could fully take out the Magnezone, or it could live and do for the Mirror Coat. We do not know. Is also one of those in New Mexico Arcanines do not know they're going for Miracle, so they go for Hydro Pump again, positively believing that they're going to take it out. But then we do see this here to where both moves miss and fail because Hydro Pump missed and Miracle failed because there was no contact move. Seems like Team Coin is still going for the same strat while realizing that he has Miracoat. He decided to use Volt Switch, not give that much damage, and give a free switch out to something else. Let's see what the New Mexico Arcanines are going to be doing. They are doing fantastic. Both sides are doing fantastic as well. He's going to bring out Sneasler. Very good option. Is a fighting type. Super effective against the Steel. Physical Pokemon. Not going to be affected by the Miracoat that much. However, the Volt Switch does give some 
some damage by that. Let's see what they're going to do. Seems like the Team Coin is going to be trying to go for the Thunder Wave just in case they try anything. They can get a Paralyze off and lower that speed of the Sneezer because Sneezer has very high tech, high, very high speed. And it seems that the Sneezer is trying to up his uh, attack, making it potential for Sneezer to sweep. However, we do see the Magnezone go in for the Thunder Wave, getting the Paralyze off of it. Lowering half speed by half and also making it to where it has a 25% chance of not doing anything at all. Uh, Sneezer speed though is still vast enough to outspeed the Magnezone and use close combat, knocking down the Magnezone unfortunately. But also at the same time, it does lower Sneezler's defense and special defense, leaving it at half speed clear for any Pokemon to come in and just revenge kill against it. It does seem that Team Coin is trying to think about what they want to do in order to do and everything. But it seems like they have finally decided and they're bringing out the Shaman Sky form. Shaman Sky form is very fast and hits very hard, especially it also is Grass Flying, which accesses, which is access to flying type moves, which is super effective against the Sneasler. Look, at least see the Team Coin easily pick Air Slash. While we see over here on the New Mexico Air Arcanine side, they're probably thinking of, do I want to try to stay in and get this damage on the Shaman Sky? And apparently they do, and they also Terra the Sneezler too, potentially getting rid of their Flying and Psychic type weakness. Not knowing which move to go for, they go for Flying, which is very good. It gets rid of the Fighting type weaknesses, it gets rid of the Poison type weaknesses with the ground and everything. It is a very good defensive po defensive Terra, while they also it does learn Academy but unfortunately the air slash with the crit does take down the Sneasler unfortunately. Sneasler does learn acrobatics too so while it is defensive with the flying type Terra it can also be offensive with the flying type Terra with acrobatics and in this format with no held items acrobatics is 110 flying type damage which can be very deadly for a lot of different Pokemon. We do see the Grimmsnarl come back up against the Shaman Sky. With Prankster, it could do a number of things. It could set up screens. It could do Thunder Wave. It could do Parting Shot. We do not know what it's going to do. And it seems like Team Coin is thinking the same thing as well because they quickly decide to go ahead and switch. They switch out over into the Torkoal, which is very good because with the screens up and everything, Torkoal is more relying on defense than anything else. And with it already being slow, in case if it does get Thunder Waved by Grimmsnarl because of Prankster, it won't have no problem with the speed control. We do see the Grimmsnarl go for Light Screen, hopefully to live a hit from the Shaman Sky, but it turns out we now have the Torkoal in front of it, so now Grimmsnarl has to do something else instead. We do see the Grimmsnarl go for Reflect, which is also very good as well. One of the good things about Grimmsnarl is it learns Reflect and Light Screen with Prankster, which means that most of the times, 10 out of 10 times, is going to be able to throw up a screen in order to eat up some hits. We do see the Parting Shot go off of here on the Torkoal, lowering the attack and Special Attack, but not doing that much because Torkoal is going for Body Press. The Body Press did a little bit of damage against Grimmsnarl but not that much but it's still good because it does give Grimmsnarl a little bit of type of way to switch out if anything we see the Rotom come back again this Rotom is trying to get this Hydro Pump onto this Torkoal. We see the little bit of damage come from the rocks. While we do see that the coin, Team Coin predicted the switch out with Parting Shot and is going to be going the Yawn Strat against some of the, of the Pokemon we do see here now we have another choice to make here. Does Torkoal want to stay in from the Hydro Pump? Because it is in the sun, so it is going to be not very effective by the sun, but it is still super effective against the Torkoal. While Rotom has to decide if it wants to go to sleep or not because of the yawn. We do see here that the Rotom decides to go for Electric Terrain, trying to save itself from being put to sleep from the yawn, but unfortunately with Levitate, it is not on the ground and all terrain has to be only affected on the Pokemon on the ground. Levitate Pokemon, Flying type Pokemon, Air Balloon Pokemon are not affected by terrain, unfortunately. So the Rotom does go to sleep. Seeing this slight misstep, we do see the New Mexico Arcanine switch out over to Grimmsnarl. So that way they get to try to keep the Rotom or if anything, maybe they can do save it for a safe switch in later. We do see that the Seamus guy went for Energy Ball, hoping it was going to land an attack on the Rotom, but unfortunately with the Grimmsnarl out here and the light screen up, it did little damage against the Grimmsnarl. Now, we have not seen all of Grimmsnarl's moves, so we do not know what the fourth move it is, and it seems the Team Coin is thinking that as well, because they keep switching out into Torkoal, predicting another move that could come from the Grimmsnarl. We've already, we've seen Parting Shot Reflect and Light Screen, so we don't know what the final move is yet. We get to see the final move, it is Spirit Break. There is no speed control on the Grimmsnarl. There is no Thunder Wave. There is all definitely support over here, which is still very good. 
but I feel confident with this team point is now okay cool we now know what the fourth move is we don't have to worry about anything here it seems Grimmsnarl is trying to get some protective damage against the uh Torkoal by Doom Reflect, which is good because even the body press is by defense, it is still a physical move, so it's still affected by the Reflect. We do see the Grimmsnarl here go for Parting Shot to try to go out to another Pokemon, so that way it can save itself for Reflex and for Parting Shots for later in the battle. We just see Torkoal coming out here, trying to predict that fourth move from the Grimmsnarl here, and afterwards being like, alright, Torkoal's now done, we know what the fourth move is, and we're all going to be all good to go. We do see the electric lane, which means that Pokemon can be put to sleep, so Torkoal cannot use the Yawn strats on any of the other Pokemon, because because Rotom is already asleep, and with the electric terrain happening, other Pokemon cannot fall asleep. We do see the Melodic come out, hopefully for a safe switch in against another Pokemon, and what we do see here, it does get affected by the stones, and then Body Press does take it out. We are in the last three minutes of the battle. This battle has been going on for a long time, both opponents switching out, trying to find the upper hedge for everybody else. This has been a very good battle here, folks, from both sides, from Team Coin and from the New Mexico Arcanines. We see the Rotom come back out, take a little bit of damage from the rocks, and I'm pretty sure at this point we're just hoping for a Rotom wake up into the Hydro Pump. Electric Terrain did go, but the Drought is still up, so a Hydro Pump does land, it will only do a little bit of damage. While we do see the Coin Master here, Team Coin, just keep going with the Body Press against the Rotom. Probably letting the Torkoal go down so we get a safe switch in. We do see the Hydro Pump finally land against the Torkoal after all this time, but it doesn't do enough damage. The Sunlight is out, so potentially Hydro Pump does have a chance to take out the Torkoal, but it does miss, unfortunately, which is very unfortunate, which does give Torkoal the chance to do Body Press and take down the Rotom, leaving only Grimmsnarl on the New Mexico Arcanine side. Reflect is gone now, too, so now Body Press should not be affected by that much by anything. We do see the Grown Star come out here. Take a little bit of damage from the rocks over here. And then we see what each opponent is going to do. It seems like even though the timer is going to be getting very, very slow and lowered, we do see that the Coutine Coin decided to go for Yawn to try to go ahead and get the Grimstar to go to sleep just in case so that way Torkoal or any other Pokemon can take it out in case Torkoal goes down. We do see that the Grimstar is not trying to go for anything particular here. They're just going for attacking moves, either take down the Torkoal and move the battle as fast as possible or just trying to take down this Torkoal because it has been a nuisance for them the entire time. We do see Torkoal pick up the kill against the Grimstar, giving Team Coin the victory here. Both sides were doing very good over here. GG's to both teams and everything. And this is Steve commentating for this battle. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And with that, I'll see everybody next time.